I am not overtly in love with social media on the record. I'm in love with consumer attention. It just happens to be on social media right now. Obviously, I'm sure this is not news for anyone, being who I am and what I do and living in the United States, I am unlimited bombarded over the last month of like, what, what do you think about if TikTok gets banned? What's gonna happen if TikTok gets banned? My answer to that is like, that's above my pay grade. I have no idea what you know, China and Russia and America are doing with themselves. But, but if it gets banned, all that attention just goes somewhere else. And so like to me, we're not out of business if TikTok, uh, we're not out of business if every social media disappears. Attention goes somewhere. It was on the radio back in the day, then it went to television, now it's on the internet. The current state of the internet is social media. The metaverse may happen one day. If, if this company has it its way, then plenty of people will be living in you know, Horizon and, and Oculus. You, you know, I think that's an inevitable outcome. I think the question really is timing. Is that three years from now? Is that 13 years from now? But this is all about attention. And what creators understand is the attention sits on these platforms and to remind everybody, the attention is free. The attention is free and it's more free than ever now because you and your competitors and the other platforms now reward quality creative to get more organic reach because your job and your competitor's job is to keep people on your platform so it's better to give people what they actually want versus the alternative. So it's becoming more important. Meanwhile, the ad products continue to be grossly underpriced because unlike the rest of the ad world that creates artificial floors of cost, television, print, radio, websites, digital, most of you and your competitors' ad product is based on supply and demand. So for example, not because I love you so much at Meta, but because I love being right, I've been yelling for seven weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks about Facebook Reels being grossly underpriced, because they are. Because they're incredibly underpriced, because there's a stunning amount of attention on Facebook Reels, but a misunderstanding of it from the creator and the brand ecosystem of how much attention's there, thus there's not enough content being put on it against the demand, thus everyone who's doing it gets more awareness. Over time that will be figured out, it will neutralize, and then you see what always happens in every platform. The organic reach is only a function of supply and demand, now it's a bigger function of the quality of the content, which is a huge opportunity for all of us. And then the ad products on top of it are incredibly underpriced. And in the post iOS 14.5 world, with tagging and you know cookieing, now the creative becomes even a bigger variable because the best practice now is win on creative, see that there's an indicator that there's interest, and then post produce that asset into a performance ad and run media against it. So the playbooks will continue to change and ebb and flow, but creators understand it. What do I think about the organic and media? On you and the competitive landscape, I think the far majority of it is underpriced. The problem is the creative industry that we live in doesn't know how to make creative at an appropriate price. The ad world is broken. Creative's too expensive. And so brands that are Fortune 500 brands can't take advantage of the social platforms because of creative AOR doesn't know how to make volume creative at a cost that's efficient against the distribution that's in front of us. And that's the elephant in the room. So here's how I see the world. A brand has a brand positioning. We have to respect that, work has been done. You have to have some sort of point of view, respect. Next, and most importantly, and the biggest issue I have with advertising, the next thing in our framework is what's the business objective? Meaning, I've, I've said plenty very direct things here, I'm gonna say another one. Most agencies don't actually care about trying to make, especially on the creative side. They wanna do the creative idea they have. They don't care about driving the business. So the framework for me doing social brand building and, and building businesses is what's the brand stand for? What's the business objective? The next thing we do is we create 40 to 50 consumer segmentations. Not three, right? 40 to 50 consumer segmentations. 18 to 22 year old males living in Bangladesh that are into esports. 21 to 27 year old females in Tokyo making 200,000 a year. 40 to 45 year old moms in Malaysia who 
have an affinity towards high fashion. Real, specific consumer cohorts with real teeth, okay? Next on that is called PAC, platforms and culture. Like, do you actually understand what the platforms are doing? Next, which platforms are you creating for? You've now gone the whole way down, now it's, we're gonna pick Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And for me, every brand that's in this room should be on all of them. But this is back to allocation where their dollars go, so they can't, but they should, but they'd rather spend $8 million on a TV spot. So you lay out the platforms, then you go to work. So now you've created a framework, now your creative and strategy team are ready to work. Now you start posting against the framework, right? You know what consumer you're going after, you know what you're trying to achieve in business, you know how the platforms work, so you know Facebook Reels is underpriced right now, you know that green screen headline creative is over-indexing on TikTok, you know. So you start making. Now the work really begins after you make. You have a person in your strategy team called a PCS, a post-creative strategist. Her and his job is to look at all the qualitative feedback. You have your analytics and media team look at the quant feedback and you start making your machine smart, like a half-pregnant AI. The team gets smart through the work. You start looking at the proxies. When you've got a retail brand that sells in retail stores, you're running the media against holdout clusters to prove that you're actually driving incremental growth. If you have a DTC brand or an app, it's a piece of cake. You're just looking at the black and white data. When the creative goes viral or over indexes its norm, it becomes the brief for more efficient and effective work. So now the virality, based on the consumer sentiment and intent and truth, becomes a proxy to your brief, not a strategist sitting in an office, going on Reddit for four hours, writing a brief. Then you do that forever and ever and ever. Your cohorts are an accordion. As you start getting affirmation that something's not working, you actually eliminate Malaysian moms 40, 45, because you aren't finding affinity. Your creative team hasn't hit the mark. On the flip side, while marketing to Indonesia gamers 13 to 15, you realize it's actually the female gamers 13 to 15 that are even more interested in the intent, and you create a new cohort to go there to double down on the truth of the consumer, not the audacity of the boardroom. That's how I do it. As I've been on that little rant, just for the room, think about how fundamentally different that is than 99% of the execution of social media marketing in our industry. That's how big the opportunity is. You know, the energy of this talk is not pointing fingers or anxiety, it's opportunity. The reason the world sits in this bizarro landscape where big brands would rather M&A small brands into their organizations than do the work that the small brands are doing is completely predicated on the disconnect between the agency and brand ecosystem and it doesn't have to be that way. It just doesn't have to be that way. And I think, um, I think the industry needs to step up the ad industry needs to step up. We need to provide more value to our clients. You know, I'm aware that there's only five or six holding companies and it's in essence a monopoly within each other. I get that. But it's not sustainable or it's going to be a problem in a 10, 15, 20 year window. And I understand that the executives that run those companies don't care. They're gonna be retired by then. So that's fine. But there's a reason companies go out of business. And this is what it looks like. You can't spend $7 million a year in creative fees to get one video a year for television and then get matching luggage for social in 2023. Makes no fucking sense. This is very important. I don't think people are bad. I don't think they're even, I don't even think people are ill-intended. I just think the, cre- I think the advertising industry has to look itself in the face and say, Do we have our client's best interest in mind or do we have our best interest in mind? Programmatic black boxes that are just sitting with tons of margin for our media agency is not in the best interest of our clients. Buying bad inventory on dot coms, running media that doesn't understand the creative that's being run on it and having those two separated, these are not real 
smart things to do in 2023. And, and honestly, I've talked a lot about the platforms and I've talked a lot about the agency, but at the end of the day, the person's fault in this entire ecosystem is the brands. They're the ones that write the check. And so that to me is the most fascinating mm-hmm. part. Like, you know, you, you get what you pay for. And you know, to me, I think the, the things that bring me passion and interest and drive me and make me want to do this this morning is to create a dialogue that's missing. I did this in the wine business. Wine was overpriced when I got into it. Premium wine in America was overpriced. And it didn't need to be that way and people didn't like the conversation, but it ended up being true. And it helped the consumer. I really struggle with the advertising industry. I don't think the brands are in a good spot. I think they're losing market share and I think they're gonna continue to lose market share unless they adjust to the title of this, which is social media is just a slang term for the current state of where the attention of consumers are and we need to understand how to be good at it and I think everyone in this room knows the far majority of big businesses are not good at it. They're just not.